Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Welcome to Beyond the Horizon episode one. Today we are going to be discussing uh, Horizon's Ecosystem Vision 2.0 will be welcoming on John Camardo, Senior Product Manager of Horizon Labs, to discuss. Before we get into that, we'll go ahead and share our ecosystem and product updates for the month, as well as welcoming a special message from Rafa Leone to celebrate our first episode. Today's product and ecosystem updates focus around something that we're all very excited about. Horizon's EVM sidechain is now live on Dune Testnet, and we've announced that the name of this product is called EON, which stands for Ethereum Open Network. We have achieved compliance with JSON RPC 2.0 specification, which means Ethereum compatibility. The team has worked internally with partners to deploy an NFT minting page, a DEX, a bridge moving USDC from and to Ethereum Gurley, and a block explorer. Our partners have played a key role in both deploying the smart contracts and reporting detailed descriptions of the issues they have faced. The main contributors to the process are large names in the space, and we're looking forward to announcing these parties and partnerships as soon as possible. We currently have available this lovely documentation website, which will be critical to accessing and using the EVM chain when live on public testnet. In the spirit of making the developer experience and onboarding as simple as possible, we've also deployed a testnet faucet where users are able to get free testnet Zen to pay for transaction fees they'll incur for deploying and interacting with contracts. In that same spirit, we're working on an EVM dashboard page, which will provide transparency into the status of the EVM as seen here. It will be fully updated with additional information as we move forward with testing. Among the milestones we've recently achieved, there are a few key security updates with our ecosystem. These are key rotation for signature signers, which allows us greater flexibility with our validator set, non ceasable side chains, and a secure enclave, which provides greater security for key storage on our validator nodes. In addition, we've gone through an internal audit, find and fix cycle, and we've added basic authentication to our API methods. Now for general ecosystem updates. Cross sidechain communication has been designed and is going through internal reviews. The Ryzen SDK and EVM will be an enabler for when the feature will be available as it likely won't be available when our EVM goes to production. We're working towards deploying a new version of Zendu, which will enable non-seizable sidechains on our main chain. All the features above will be made available as soon as we make the hard fork in the official testnet. However, before we go through this process, we've been spending a lot of our time thinking carefully about security and working with our audit partners to fix any vulnerabilities that have been discovered through the audit process. Okay, and those were our updates for the month. So if you guys have any questions about any of the updates, feel free to join us on our Discord. We'll be sharing the link below. Uh, So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and welcome our special message from Rob. Here we are. Hello, Horizon community, and welcome to our new podcast, Beyond the Horizon. We've got a lot going on in 2023, and we're really happy to have you along for the ride. Everything from launching an Ethereum virtual machine smart contract and platform to DAO, to dozens, if not hundreds, of other applications that will go live in our ecosystem. This is your one-stop shop to talk to the innovators, product managers, and big thinkers that are behind the scenes actually making these things possible. So we hope you enjoy the show. Thank you, Rob, for that wonderful insight. We'll now be moving on to our special guest, as well as the focus topic of this episode, which is Horizon Ecosystem Vision 2.0, featuring John Camardo, the Senior Product Manager of Horizon Labs, 
who is also heading part of this ecosystem initiative. So we'll go ahead and move on to welcome John. Hey everyone, we're live with Senior Product Manager John Camardo of Horizon Labs. He's going to take us through the Horizon Ecosystem Vision 2.0, as well as answer the questions that you submitted to us. Welcome, John. Thanks, Erica. How are you? I'm great. And yourself? Doing pretty amazing. It's Friday, so and we're getting ready for a long weekend, so super excited to um, think about Horizon and Horizon future strategy all weekend. <laughs> I bet. Me too. Um, so before we get into the Q&A session, could you maybe tell us a bit more about yourself and your history with Horizon Labs? Sure. Um, so I uh, graduated from college about almost 10 years ago now uh, uh, from Cornell University. I started my career off at Capital One as a strategy analyst and um, spent about seven years there in commercial banking. Uh, from there, uh, joined Horizon Labs in June of 2021. Um, was, I think, the first product hire um, and the kind of the first new hire in a wave of a bunch of new hires. I uh, spent the first part of that year uh, really kind of like deep diving into wallets, into certain technologies that we had already built or were in the process of building um, and worked with uh, technology to kind of come up with a roadmap of things that we would work on. One of those items was obviously Token Mint, Cobalt, um, a number of the things that you've seen that we've deployed over the past few months. Uh, going into 2022, we started kind of working on the EVM that we'll talk pretty significantly about. And we're coming to a close on actually re releasing that to test that and then to mainnet um, pretty shortly. So keep your eyes peeled for announcements related to that. And uh, now we're kind of taking the opportunity since we've grown pretty significantly and matured as an organization, uh, kind of put together a new mission statement for the company to look at where the industry has kind of moved as we've been heads down in build mode and think about what the future uh, is going to look like, how we want to be positioned in the market and really kind of redevelop a strategy around what you think that's going to look like. Um, and that's really what you were alluding to before. Yes, very much so. And honestly, I'm going to just share a little tidbit about the time that I met you. What was it? Maidenet 2021, I think. Yeah. That was such a strange event, but it was a lot of fun meeting you there. Uh, had I thought uh, that the addition of you to our team was going to end up building our ecosystem out like as much as it has in the past year, I probably would have been a little more helpful to you. <laughs> I remember you standing in a corner uh, just watching us give the what is Horizon spiel over and over again. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a bit of fun, actually. And you you helped out pretty significantly. Yeah. <laughs> partnered on a lot of projects. I guess it was early 2022. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't take really any credit for all that, um, all what, what's been built. Um, I was a participant and maybe helped push things along, but certainly have to give a shout out to all the technology teams, all the other product managers, because um, it wouldn't have been possible without them and obviously the support of our leadership team. Um, so can't take really very much credit there, but I appreciate it. Of course, you can take a little credit, though. <laughs> Rob is going to come in later and take all of the credit anyway, so it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm just uh, setting it up for, for credit later, so it's okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, since we have been alluding to the EVM, can you tell us a little bit more about the Horizon Ecosystem Vision 2.0 and how EVM fits into that? Sure. Um, so really, uh, the EVM is kind of like one of the most critical components of this. It's it's really um, going to set us up relatively differently than we have been in the past. The way I like to talk about things, or talk about the EVM at least, is that um, the rest of the world has really adopted Ethereum, 
the programming languages, the paradigms as standards at this point. And to date, we've been kind of speaking a, a different language. Um, we've had UTXO specific blockchains. Uh, we've had different cryptographic uh, primitives that we use in kind of our main chain and the first side chain that we built. And so this Ethereum uh, deployment, this Ethereum virtual machine deployment is really a, a major step toward us being able to speak the language that the rest of the industry speaks, or at least that they're comfortable with at this point. Um, it's going to enable us to access liquidity uh, that Ethereum has a significant amount of and really make connections with developers, communities, enterprises, anyone who's kind of familiar with the language or understands smart contracts uh, and create a space where builders can really hopefully build the next killer app with our support, with our partner's support. So it's a super exciting step forward, um, but it's not the only step forward. We're kind of taking a look at how the market has evolved like in, other, in other ways. Um, and really looking hard at a lot of what we have, uh, evaluating whether or not it meets the market needs with the help of our product team and our strategy teams and product marketing. And then we're going to decide what we need to build to meet those industry needs, um, meet the needs of our partners, of the clients that we want to onboard, of the consumers and community members that we want to participate with us. And really start executing against building those things out, adapting what we've already built. Um, and so a lot of exciting things to come. Uh, we're kind of in the process of really writing out this strategy right now. And over the next month or so, and this will help hold myself accountable, uh, we should have something that we can release publicly uh, to get some feedback on, have people publicly comment on. And then from there, really start designing um, and executing against what will be essentially our roadmap for the rest of the year and probably into next year as well. Amazing. It sounds like a really exciting time for the product teams. Super exciting. Great. I also like that you gave yourself a hard timeline and we're all going to now make sure that you deliver us this amazing ecosystem vision roadmap in the next month or so. Can't wait to see that. I tend to work pretty well under pressure. So the more pressure that I can apply or help everyone else apply to myself, the, the better the outcome will be. Fantastic. We'll all be there pushing you along. <laughs> all right. Well, now we're going to go into the Q&A. Uh, we had everybody send their questions to us on Mentee over the last week and a half. Uh, so we'll go ahead and ask the community's questions to you now. If you notice that your question wasn't answered on the podcast today, join us on Discord. We'll be happy to talk to you about what your question was, as well as see if it's something that we can provide you an answer on. So John, what sets Horizon apart and why should people build on the ecosystem? Yeah, thanks for the question, Erica. Um, so I want to start out just by maybe uh, introducing uh, the listeners to our updated mission statement. And it's just a slight update from what it's been in the past, but what we're really trying to do is secure the world's transition to Web3. And I think this is a super meaningful uh, mission statement on a number of dimensions, but what we're really aiming to try to do is create a safe, secure, and trustworthy way of bringing current and new users into the crypto space or into the blockchain space. Um, we're looking at all people, enterprises, individuals, consumers, developers, whomever. Um, so that's kind of our mission statement. And I'll admit that we're a little late to the game, kind of switching into the Ethereum um, space again on bringing Ethereum compatibility to Horizon. But what this has uh, kind of allowed us to do is take a step back and understand the pitfalls that other industry players have faced We've been able to study how other parties have implemented their EVMs. Uh, so we kind of know where the industry is. We have a perspective and are continuing to develop and learn from that perspective on where the industry we think is going. 
And so that's allowing us to really think hard and put a lot of time and effort into building out the right marketing, branding, other things that are going to attract the developers that we want in the community. And we're going to do this by uh, launching a couple of programs that I can't speak specifically about yet, but that will be launched over the next month or so with kind of the testnet and mainnet um, deployment of our EVM. And so these different programs are going to be really focused on finding the right folks who share our values of trust, transparency, security, and privacy. And I think this is going to be something that will set us apart from other projects and will be a really good incentive for building on Horizon, either um, in addition to or instead of other places. Um, and then the other thing is really just like kind of the flexibility of, of our ecosystem. Uh, the sidechain system that we've implemented provides a significant amount of flexibility. You can essentially build whatever kind of sidechain you want with whatever consensus, networking, et cetera, that you want as well. Um, and so that's kind of another thing that uh, has been the case for a little while, but uh, is worth noting as well. That's really exciting. So this next question kind of ties into uh, that you mentioned the flexibility of the Horizon ecosystem. Um, so the question is, what would you say the main advantages are of building with Horizon sidechains versus forking a project such as Ethereum? Yeah, I guess I got it too excited with the last question and started answering a bunch of other questions as well. Uh, I, th I think the major advantage again is really the flexibility. Um, we are participating in an industry that's constantly changing. It's relatively um, new and we haven't really figured a lot of things out quite yet. Um, Ethereum was built many years ago um, and our main chain is kind of like a, a, a fork of a fork, but what Sendu allows us to do is to start to layer on things as they come in. Um, as new technology is implemented, we can plug and play different uh, consensus mechanisms inside chains. We can uh, pick and choose the best layers that um, make the most sense for whatever kind of app-specific chain we're potentially trying to build. Um, and so really the customizability is super important. Uh, forking doesn't necessarily give that flexibility, uh, but it, what it does allow us to do is test new projects, test new implementations, plug them into our ecosystem and see how they work. Um, and so we're really trying to push forward in this industry. And uh, I think some of the things that you'll see come out of our project, like our sidechain communication uh, messaging protocol will be super important here and really allow us to explore allow us and you and developers uh, to explore and figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, and so that's really the big advantage, I think. Uh, flexibility and the ability to play around with certain things, see how they interact with one another. And if they don't work, uh, move on to something else. It's pretty straightforward to do that right now. Amazing. And when you mentioned the messaging protocol, I believe it was, is that in referral to or reference to uh, moral guidelines for partners or is that something different? That's something a little bit different. So w what we've started to see in the industry, um, and there are certain players that are already doing this, others that are kind of adopting this technology, but the ability to bridge within an ecosystem. Bridging between ecosystems is obviously a big, um, massive kind of thing that's been um, implemented by a number of parties in a variety of different ways. But we're really looking at trying to enable you to fluidly move throughout our ecosystem. And by move, I mean transfer assets between different sidechains in a way that's super secure, super safe, uh, transparent, fast, trustworthy. Uh, so some of our technology uh, teams are kind of working on developing that solution right now. And we believe it'll be really important as we continue to think about what future side chains need to be built, maybe what side chains we want to form relationships with or acquire. Um, 
And so that's really what I mean by the sidechain messaging communication protocol. Very cool and very interesting. I'm really excited to learn a little bit more about that when it's ready. Uh, though I did bring up an interesting point uh, previously with my, my former question. Uh, does Horizon have or plan to have moral guidelines for selecting its future partners? Yes. Um, so again, I, I'm going to go back and kind of um, restate kind of our mission statement, um, securing the world's transition to Web3. And so that kind of just means like helping people transition to Web3, but it also means, um, in my opinion, kind of like creating a safe, secure, and trustworthy way to, to participate in Web3. So ultimately, yes, we have matured pretty significantly as an organization over the past year and a half. We began to put into place a number of systems and processes that uh, we believe will help us kind of select uh, the partners that are going to align to the mission that I just mentioned. Um, one of the things that we've been thinking about though is that rug pulls um, certain harmful things that have happened in the industry over the past, uh, I guess, couple of years, at least since I've been participating in crypto and blockchain certainly set us back quite significantly, um, kind of take one step forward and two steps back, it seems like sometimes. And we don't want to do business with people who are going to set us back. We are positioning ourselves to be a player in this industry for a very long time. And so we have constantly tried to learn from all the mistakes that have been made over the past um, and are really trying to understand how other ecosystems have done things successfully and ensure that the partners that we select, the technology that we build, and um, everything we do essentially is all in service of creating a resilient system, ecosystem, protocols, technology that will uh, be sustainable throughout the next bull cycle and uh, whatever that brings and then whatever cycles happen beyond that. Okay. And you mentioned a few different kinds of use cases that you're anticipating to see in, in your last answer. Is there a particular use case of Horizon which could make it mass adopted? Um, there are certainly a number. The most near-term use case is really the implementation of our Ethereum virtual machine sidechain uh, as Zen will be the way that folks play, pay transaction fees and pay uh, contract deployment fees. That's obviously uh, the biggest and shortest term one, but well, obviously we're kind of focused on building out a number of things within Horizon Labs. Um, we have some protocols that we're going to be launching with the EVM uh, in testnet and in mainnet. Those will hopefully uh, drive usage of our side chain and therefore usage of, usage of Zen. Um, but the ecosystem is kind of like really a, a platform that's meant to be uh, enable, meant to enable people to, to launch their own uh, ideas, protocols, et cetera. So uh, as someone within the organization kind of keeps pushing and, and saying, and I think it's a really great analogy, um, Microsoft, if you look kind of back uh, built an operating system and they certainly built some apps that have become ubiquitous um, and have been super useful. But a lot of the apps that we use every day aren't built by Horizon or built by Microsoft or Apple. They're built by enterprises. They're built by individual developers that turn into big companies. Um, and so really what we're looking for, uh, and the EVM is going to be a jumping off point is uh, for developers to come in and potentially build the next killer use case. Um, now that we're speaking the same language at the rest of the world, there's a significant opportunity for people to kind of jump in and, and experiment um, and do those kinds of things. And so in tandem with Horizon Labs, uh, hopefully we can build something really awesome with the community. 
And do you think that something that we may build in the future could potentially be a ZK EVM? It certainly could be. Um, we have done some research on ZK EVMs, um, but for now, we're really, really laser focused on building the EVM for all the reasons that I cited um, in previous statements that I've made. Um, and if it's something, if the ZK EVM is something that the industry really feels is going to be um, a massive part of the future of our industry, then we'll certainly consider uh, adding it as something on our roadmap. Uh, it's currently on a roadmap to continue to look into, keep an eye on, continue to kind of strategically evaluate. Um, and again, if, if we see an opportunity to play in that space going forward, we certainly will. We have adopted uh, agile methodologies, so we're relatively um, nimble and able to pivot into things as they come up uh, or as we see the need to kind of pivot into them. Okay, amazing. So since that question has to do somewhat with ZK Tech, uh, we did receive a question asking if Horizon or Horizon Labs still research ZK Tech. Horizon and Ed Labs certainly does still research ZK Tech. We have a really stellar team of in-house uh, cryptographers and cryptographic engineers. We also have a variety of partnerships with um, people at universities and also for-profit companies. Within our new strategy as well that I mentioned and alluded to earlier, um, we believe that ZK Tech and certainly Snarks will play an incredibly important role. Uh, they currently play a significant role in a lot of the technology that we've rolled out over the past couple of years. And um, a lot of the focus that I'm um, that I have right now within developing that strategy is to figure out how we can use and um, find valuable ways where ZK Tech and Snarks can add value to all the things that we're hopeful that we can build over the next year or so. Very excited. Um, how about maybe a private stable coin? Is that something we'd consider? Um, it, it's certainly something we consider. We consider. Um, it's not something that's currently on near or medium term roadmap. Um, I guess a couple of things to call out regulation, both in the United States and around the world is kind of still in the process of being sorted out with respect to privacy and, um, coins. But if you kind of look at cash, it's pretty close to a stable coin and governments have started to investigate, uh, use cases for crypto. So if it ends up being something that checks a variety of boxes like the legal box, the regulatory box. Um, it can certainly fit into a part of our roadmap. And again, we're very much set up in a way where we can quickly pivot into things like this if we're able to find the right partner that aligns really well to our mission. Uh, we'd absolutely consider doing something like this if all those boxes get checked. Um, but again, really laser focused on EVM right now and bringing on the appropriate tools and resources that are going to enable that EVM to reach its fullest potential. Very cool. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one of our final questions today, how could I pitch side chains to builders and projects? It's a great question. And one that we spent a lot of time kind of thinking about internally, um, uh, so the way that we look at the world is it kind of is bifurcated into two different personas um, in terms of people who might build side chains um, and projects that might build side chains. So one is kind of crypto developers and enterprises. The other is enterprises. Um, crypto developers, like we recognize that Ethereum is a crowded space. There are potentially high transaction fees and significant congestion, depending on what kind of is going on there. Um, and so we kind of have already started to see app chains pop up. If you look at what DYDX is doing specifically, and they've customized their 
chain to be um, exactly what they need. And so the way that I would pitch to a crypto developer is kind of along those lines. Like we have the flexibility for you to implement whatever you need based on whatever sort of issues you're running into wherever you've deployed your technology right now. Um, on the enterprise side, we've kind of really started to reorganize our business development efforts and are in the process, as I'm sure you know very well, Erica, of uh, picking up the phone and pounding the pavement to really find um, corporations, governments, uh, smaller entities across the world. Um, what we've recognized, though, on in those spaces is that the tech really needs to be incorporated into the current stack that these companies are potentially already working with. And in a lot of cases, that stack is the result of many acquisitions and kind of pasting together a bunch of technologies that weren't necessarily meant to work with each other. And in all likelihood, integrating blockchain into that stack is going to require the exact same customization and flexibility. And I hate to beat a dead horse at this point uh, and say customization and flexibility yet again. Um, but it's really the important piece that's going to, I think, allow us to retrofit what we have into whatever that that tech stack looks like. Okay, fantastic. I don't think that there's really a uh, customizability and flexibility dead horse quite yet. I think we're all very excited to hear those words, but I'm excited at least. And yes, I completely understand what you mean by picking up the phone and dialing numbers and trying to get as many people as we can interested in this new product. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for today's show. If you guys have any questions about what we discussed today, feel free to join us again on Discord, where we will be happy to answer your questions. And if you have any suggestions for episodes that you would love to see us cover, go ahead and fill out the Google form linked in the information below, or you can join our Discord where we will also share the link. Okay. Well, thank you all so very much for joining us today. Have a great month. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.